Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 29 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Last episode, we set up this nifty room right over here. It's an Enderman spawner. Uh, you actually activate the lever, and it starts spawning Enderman for us. We captured an evil Enderman who was harassing us at our base. Decided to come over here and mess with me. Uh, the reason we want to capture him is not for the Ender Pearls, but for the Enderman Heads. These things are pretty useful. Ender.io has a lot of good uses for them. Um, Enderman Heads are used in a lot of different nifty things, and we're going to use them for a few important things today. Um, Enderman Heads are used for stuff, uh, but you can also use them to get yourself um, Tormented Enderman Heads. And Ender Resonators and the Ender Resonators are also used for some really nice and important stuff. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, nifty. So let's get started. Ooh, dialing device. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah, let's definitely get started playing around with stuff. What I wouldn't mind is a dimensional transceiver. Uh, and I would kind of like to auto-craft this if we can. Uh, what's involved in this? Ender Crystals needs the Soul Vial of an Enderman and a Vibrant Crystal. Okie dokie then. Uh, that's doable. So what we can do to get a soul vial of an enderman is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, all we have to do is pop over to here and switch this guy to capture mode and place a soul vial in there and then activate the lever. So a soul vial of an enderman is actually not too bad. Now I wonder if I leave this in capture mode. What would be cool for auto crafting purposes is basically if we left it in capture mode and just piped in an empty soul vial, we could treat that like a crafting mechanic. That would kind of be cool. That is cool. Yeah, it can stay in capture mode and activate it as much as we want. Interesting. I might need to keep an eye, uh, um, keep that in mind as it relates to how to auto-craft dimensional transceivers, because that's kind of like one of the last tricky parts. The other thing we're going to want is a vibrant capacitor, so do 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 do, -do. Uh, dimensional transceiver. It's going to need this dude, so we're going to need a couple fuse quartz. All right, so we're cooking up that uh, Enderman head thingy that we need for the dimensional transceiver. Uh, what else do we need for this thing? Fused quartz. Two of them. Liking the fact that I started auto crafting a lot of this stuff. It's actually been really nice. So, that, my friends, is one dimensional transceiver. Now I need to go make another one. Alright, I think I did everything. Let's see if I'm right about this. Come on, Soulbinder, let's go. Dimensional transceiver. Nice. Two of them. That's what's up. All right, so the dimensional transceiver. Uh, those of you who've played previous versions of Minecraft should be pretty familiar with this, and if not, at least understanding what this does, understanding how it works. It works like a Tesseract, um, or it basically can teleport items, liquids, and fluids across dimensions, across long distances of space. Pretty much, if you have power over here and you want to get power to another dimension or another world, dimensional transceiver, total the way to do. Um, I wouldn't mind some new conduits while I'm here. Do you know how to make enhanced energy conduits? You don't, but it's about time you learned because I'm gonna want a bunch of them popping down here. Looks like we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need some more conduits. Uh, so I wouldn't mind making like a stack of these. Shouldn't be too bad. Um, and I wouldn't mind a crafter or two, just so that I have more space to, you know, fill out this crafting wall area. Cool. So you're gonna make a lot of things, obviously. You're smelting up some binder composite, you're smelting up some vibrant alloy, you're smelting up some sand, um, and conduits are good to go. So I'm making the next tier of energy conduit. This stuff, so like tier one energy conduits can do 640 RF a tick, which we've totally and obviously seen to not be enough power transfer as things currently stand. Uh, the next tier, the enhanced energy conduit, can do 5,120 RF a tick way better. Uh, now I've already been using that over here because these guys in total are producing more than the 640 that we can handle, right? Uh, so, you know, back here and under, underground we've been using that stuff, but nowhere else really have we been using it. So, time to switch it up. Now one of the nice things about Ender.io, many nice things in Ender.io, but one of the cool things is you can replace energy conduits pretty easily um, without having to worry too much about it. 
Um, all you have to do is right click the existing energy conduit, like so. Ta da! And it automatically replaces. How cool is that? Um, so we can kind of, you know, hook all this up. Now, one of the first things I'm going to want to do. Oh, it's already. Bleh. We already killed our power. <laughs> it's all good. Um, we'll just have to kick off that crafting request again. Ideally, I got enough to get this working. And if I didn't, then that's my bad. Basically, replacing energy conduits. Not bad at all, is it? Seems like we have a lot of energy conduits to replace, doesn't it? There, that should bring our system back online. Sweet. Now, you might have a few conduits in there, but when the power goes out, we lose that crafting request. So let's request, like, you know what? I'm going to request 64 more. See, it made a bunch of the vibrant alloys that it needed to make, but we're going to need a lot more power. Um, conduits, at least. So let me go replace all my energy conduits. This is going to be a little bit boring, uh, so I want to go do it off camera now. And uh, we'll be back once I've replaced all the energy conduits in the base. All right, so if I forgot anything, I'm sure we will find out sooner than later. Um, let's put our dimensional transceiver in a place that's you know relatively out of the way, but easily accessible as needed. So this thing fills up with a local buffer and a send-receive buffer. This is the energy that's allowed to send and receive uh, across dimensions to other dimensional transceivers. Uh, there's multiple tabs here on the right. Um, so this is just like your general configuration tab. And this is like a buffer for some items to be sent and received. We can send and receive uh, items here. You can filter them. You can send and receive energy. This is the items channel. And this is the liquids channel, right? So if you want to send energy, uh, all you have to do first is make a channel. So we'll call it Dire Power 1. Cool. And we'll add that channel. And we're going to say that this dimensional transceiver is responsible for sending energy. Now, it could receive on a different channel. It could receive on the same channel. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we could also have it receiving items or liquids. Cool. Um, but right now, we're going to have it send power. Cool. So now we can go set up a dimensional transceiver anywhere in the world that we want. And if we set it to receive... Now, I thought I added you to the channels list, didn't I? Yeah. If we set it to receive on the same channel, notice how the buffers of power start filling up? It's getting power from that guy anywhere in the world, or any dimension for that matter. Sweet. So let's get this guy picked up. We're going to go upstairs. All right, so I shouldn't left click on this. Scan. Yoink. Cool. That thing broke very quickly. Uh, where's my Yetta wrench? There we go. Sweet. So now I can set up power anywhere I want. The next thing I want to do is grab my builder. Remember we used this early on. Um, the builder from RF Tools is a pretty fancy block. And it allows for a lot of different things. You can move blocks with it. You can copy structures with it. You can build with it. You can mine with it. You can clear out areas with it. There's a lot of things you can do with your builder block. We're going to use this in the deep dark to do some mining. And to do that, we're going to need a quarry card. Okay, so there's the shape card, quarry, silk quarry, fortune quarry, clearing quarry, clearing silk quarry, and clearing fortune quarry. So how does this work? It's pretty straightforward. Um, the shape card quarry will automatically quarry out an area. And I think it replaces all the stuff with dirt or something like that. Um, I tend to like to have cleared out areas. So I'm going to make the clearing quarry. What this does is it will automatically remove all stuff from the area. Instead of replacing with dirt or something like that, it'll just completely remove it. Um, and that's easy to make. You just make your existing shape cord, and then you can put some glass around it to indicate that it's a clearing quarry. Not bad. Um, the other things we can get are silk touch quarries, which are pretty expensive, as you can see, uh, and fortune quarries, which are also relatively expensive, as you can see. Um, so I, I and this also, by the way, drastically increases the amount of um, energy per block mined. 600 RF per tick per block for the fortune quarry. The regular clearing quarry is 300 RF per tick. So it doubles uh, the energy requirements if you want to apply the fortune upgrade. So this is going to require a decent amount of power. Um, 
but we're gonna see if we can pull it off. So let's go ahead and make our shape card quarry, which is just gonna require a diamond pickaxe, check, a uh, shovel, check, and a shape card, which, yay, we have the stuff for, cool. Um, and then we can make our shape card quarry, and fortune, no, regular clearing quarry. Cool, we just need some glass. Let's ask for 64, just so we have it on hand. That sound cool? And I can hear the, uh, the machines downstairs kicking off while that crafts. Super cool. All right, um, so once this is crafted, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, there we go. Yoink, shape card, quarry, clearing quarry. Um, so now we should have pretty much everything we need to go to the deep dark and automate some clearing out of terrain, which I'm excited about. So it means we can auto mine, and that's pretty cool. Hooray! So away we go into the deep dark. Whoosh! So let's find an area that we're going to just clear out a large amount of terrain from. Hmm. What's this over here, by the way? Is this lava or something? Yeah. It's like, hey, what's that light source? Man, it is so dark. <laughs> I know that's what it's meant to be, but it's still very dark to me. All right, let's set up um, just a little bit of light. I want it to kind of be away from the area that I was manually mining. I don't think it really matters all that much, to be fair, but it's all good. What's up, zombie? All right, this'll do. Let's flatten out this terrain a little bit. Hey, buddy. Okay. All right, so the quarry. Builder block, step one. Um, whatever card you place in here is going to manage to, to tell you what's going to happen. Remember we had that shape card that we were using, like way back in the day to void out area for clearing out terrain? Yeah, it's going to go back into our sorting system. Um, you're going to want to place your ender chest on top. That's where it's going to output items. So any items it gets are going to go straight into the chest above the uh, builder block. So that's pretty cool. We're also going to want to give it power, uh, which we'll do in a moment here. And then um, the shape card quarry. This is going to specify the area that we're going to mine out. Cool. So what I'm thinking we'll do is I want to start small down that, or do I want to start big? It's a good question. Um, let's go with the, let's go for broke. Let's go big. All right. Let's let's go big or go home. Right. So if I wanted to kind of just what coordinate position is this? This is how I usually do it. Two twenty four. So if I need to go looping around these things, two twenty four is the x coordinate I need to be on. So let's bring it out to like here. Hey, buddy. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, cool. That uh, underground world gen stuff kind of worked. So that's right. I have to click on the builder first. You want to shift click on the builder to like specify that we're in map things out mode. So as long as I'm at 224. You know what, skeletons? You're not helping. I want to be at 224, please. 225, 226, 224. Good enough for me. Skeletons, please. So that's one corner, and then we're going to go like up here. You know what I want to get is, well. It doesn't really matter where this one goes, because it'll kind of just go out this way. All right, we got the settings. Nice. Okay, so now that we've got that set, we can shift right click the card to open up the configurations, right? 
bad guys. Um, so we can specify what type of things to do. We want a solid box. A box would just do the, the borders, remember? So solid box is everything inside. We also want to change the Y dimensions on how that's going to work out. So the way this works is the Y coordinate here, which is currently 1, this tells you how high and low to go above the box, right? Um, and that's centered at the box. So what we're probably going to want to go is, so it's, it's Y level is currently 63. So let's make the offset like negative 30. So that it goes 30 below the box is the center of the up and down area. And then we're going to want like 100 on the Y. So that should be enough to cover all the way down to bedrock, basically. So if we pop this dude in here, we should be good to go. Um, now all we need is dimensional transceiver for power. And this thing has an internal buffer of a lot. Like, I think that's 10 million RF. So a lot. Uh, and giving him power is what's going to kick him off. Now, this is going to require a huge amount of power. So we're not going to want to just let this run all the time, especially with our current power infrastructure, right? We've only got 2 million stored in there at the moment, which is crazy. Um, this thing, yeah, uses a lot. See, a send-receive buffer is pretty low, but it's filling. Let's, hmm, let's go ahead and get ready to activate this guy. Redstone signal will kick him off. Pretty cool. I'm hoping that we have the power infrastructure to at least run this a little bit. And that it's not too much of a drain on my system. We're gonna have to kind of see. That and zombies everywhere. Goodness. All right, so now you guys should be mostly filled up. Let's activate it and see what kind of power loss we get. So we are definitely, look at this. Look how much power is dropping. We're still receiving all the RF attack that we were getting before, which is probably somewhere around 5,000, right? Wow. We are wrecking it. But if we check inside here, we'll see a bunch of stuff showing up, which is nice. That's cool. So resources are coming in. Which is definitely good. Cool. Yep, we're definitely getting things. Now if we wanted to, we could disable or void out certain items from the shape card. Which we may wind up doing at some point. But I'm also thinking I'll just let them teleport back to the base. So this guy should be importing. Why are you not importing anymore? Are you full? It might be full. I think the refined storage system is full. It's within reason to expect that that might have happened. Let's see if we can go find the hole that this is making. Yep, here it is. No, that's not it. Maybe it's back here. I wouldn't mind just kind of knowing where the where the quarry is going at the moment. Is this it? This might be it. Might just be a normal ravine though, too. It's gonna start in one of the four corners that I mapped out. And what we're looking for is a very wide open hole of some kind. All right, I don't even know where it started at. Let's go home and see what's going on, why we're not importing items. Like I said, suspicion? Might just be that we're out of refined storage space. Basement, please. Hey, guess who guessed correctly? Totally called it. Alright, so what we're going to need to do to solve this issue is um, take some items out for the time being. So, like, cobblestone. 8.9 thousand cobblestone. Oh, you know what? This needs to have a void upgrade put into it. That's our problem. Are you? Yeah. We're totally going to need a void upgrade. So 
So we're going to need a drawer template. Let's get a drawer. So this should work. This is how full my inventory is right now. There we go. That should at least allow the cobblestone to go in there. So that way, any excess cobble that shows up in the system will get voided. What I should do is clear that out. And the good way to go about doing that be to get a disk manipulator. If I remove some cobble here, let's remove something else like redstone. There we go. That will allow us to have a little bit of space to work with. Disk manipulator is going to require storage housings times two quartz. Um, we're going to need a construction core, a construction core, and a machine housing. We're also going to make more storage, by the way. But at least for now, we'll be able to do this. And I want you guys to see how to do things when stuff gets funny. So disk manipulators are cool. Uh, what they will do is allow you to manage all your disks. Uh, so what we're gonna have is cobblestone. We've got 9K in there at the moment, right? Um, really, what we should have is 6,000. So there's like 3,000 cobblestone sitting in these disks somewhere, and we don't really know where. So by using a disk manipulator, we can extract those items. So the disk manipulator can insert into network or extract from network specified items, whitelist, compare damage, MBT, etc. right? So what I'm gonna do, I know cobblestone's like the main one that I'm worried about, so let's whitelist cobblestone. And what this'll do is it'll mean it'll only extract cobble from the disks and put them into the storage system. Cool. Now, if I take all the disks out of there, check this out, right? There's probably nowhere for this guy to put cobblestone, right? So we've got 6,000 cobblestone now. So there's 3,000 cobblestone sitting on one of these disks somewhere. So if I throw these into the um, into these modes, you'll see that it's extracting disks, uh, uh, storage out of there. Nice. And uh, that's freeing up space in our network. And it's just basically putting the cobblestone into the drawer and voiding it. Um, now, what I wouldn't mind is some upgrades. Um, speed upgrade. Can you craft those for me and like work? Because that would be cool. And while I'm here, I'm going to teach this thing how to make a 16K storage part. Um, so you're going to need that. A 4K storage part. A 1K storage part. And you'll also have to know how to make a 16K storage disk with the storage part. And I think I made three crafters earlier. Nice. These guys can go in here. This is what I'm going to use to make my 16K storages. You are pretty much done. So are you just waiting to make speed upgrades? That's interesting to me. Why do you keep getting stuck on those? Machine is in use. It's not, though. Let's try and fix that. Speed upgrade. Let's, let's, it, I'm wondering if it's the order that the items go in. Because it's an upgrade and sugar, right? So if I put it in the order of upgrade, redstone, sugar, 
You think that might be the issue? It's possible. So we're gonna try it. Upgrade redstone sugar should make a speed upgrade. So this is sugar redstone upgrade. We're gonna change that to be upgrade redstone sugar. I don't know if that matters, but it's the only guess that I have as to why things might not be working. So now if I request speed upgrades times seven. Yeah, totally working. That's cool. So the reason I wanted to make these is um, the machine down there responds to like stack upgrades and stuff. So we totally want to use those to make it run a little bit quicker. Cool. So are you done crafting at the moment? I'm going to say you are. So by taking these disks out and putting them in here, it's going to extract all the cobblestone very quickly from the storage disks. And we just freed up probably about a decent amount of space. Which is cool. And if we check now, our cobblestone, is that 8K still? Maybe you weren't done extracting. You know what it'll do is when it's done, I think it moves it over to the output here. I think. Oh yeah, there we go. It's cruising now. Sweet. I think it only moves it when it's completely empty. So now we should have freed up a bunch of storage space, which we totally did. And cobblestone, cool. Nice, and ore is being processed, that's cool. So now that we've freed that up, let's go ahead and make another 16K storage disk. It's gonna require a bunch of crafting. Oh, we're missing silicon. We're gonna have to auto-craft silicon, aren't we? So this is a trick, right? Most storage networks like this don't appreciate Things like, oh yeah, sand will get you 50% chance of silicon. Like, it doesn't know how to handle it. What it's saying is, I'm putting an item in, I'm expecting to get an item out. It doesn't know how to handle, I might get an item out. Very few systems know how to handle this. So we have to figure out a way to solve that. Um, so the other options for making silicon are clay. You have like an 80% chance, so that's still not 100. So you can't say like, I'll put a piece of clay in and get one out for sure, because uh, I don't know. What you could do is put like, like say four sand gets you one silicon but still like chances are like there might be an instance where you put four sand in and just happen to not get silicon just because of random luck right so the other option is to smelt nether quartz which what's my nether quartz situation like not enough that i feel like smelting it to make a bunch of silicon Urgh, think time so here's an idea check this out what if i did this instead of let's get an external storage you're short on what? <laughs> Three silicon. Nice. Um, let's get sand. Stacks worth. Ought to do. Um, I need a little bit more silicon than I currently have. Come on, sand. Let's go. Hopefully that's enough for this silicon to come through here. Yay, at least one. That's all I needed was one. External storage, please start. Yay. If I went down here, got power funnel over here. What if we created a quick automated silicon maker that his main purpose in life was to make silicon? Cool. Um, how's my sand situation? Not bad. Seen better days, but good enough for now. Cool. Uh, let's take this six silicon because we're also going to want an export bus. And we're also going to want a crafting card upgrade. Cool. So there's my external storage. Export bus is probably in progress. You're making all the stuff we need. Cool. Machine is in use on the crafting card. I might have to change this recipe too. Let's 
we've got our crafting table, we've got our redstone, and we've got our upgrade. Let's fix this. Yeah, depending on what order you place the items in kind of matters on the, that machine there, so I kind of had the hunch. Yeah, redstone, crafting table, upgrade. I think upgrade should go first, and then crafting table, redstone. Right? Crafting table, redstone. That'll work. And that gets us our crafting upgrade. And then we'll put this back in here. And that should fix that issue. Cool. Uh, are you still trying to craft that upgrade, by the way? Yeah, crafting upgrade, go away. So what I could have then, we've got our crafting upgrade, we've got our exporter, right? We could throw a basic drawer here. What I'm gonna do is lock them and put one silicon in the top left drawer. This could be a drawer that we store all of our items like silicon, where there's a chance to craft it, and we usually want a decent amount on hand, right? Um, so for this, we're gonna wanna have a decent amount of them, but not like 32 stacks worth, right? So I broke it into four by four drawers. This will keep eight stacks of silicon on it at all times. Cool idea. So all we really need to do, um, we should really have our drawer controller going on down here now. So we could pop upstairs and make a drawer controller. That would be awesome. So what do we need? Uh, drawer controller, we need a couple of you. We need a couple of you. Can I get a stack of that? That would be super. Just hang on to a stack. So that I always have redstone torches available. Nice, drawer controller. So we don't really need the external storage bus now. Because what we're gonna do is have We'll break this. We'll have a drawer controller. I kind of want it to go here. And we'll external storage bus on that guy. And remember we should set the priority high. So like this is the first place things go, right? Um, so that's cool. So I should be able to see my cobblestone. But I can't. Why you not work? External storage. Drawer controller. That should totally be working. It's illegal to take this block. Evil. Um, are you not connect? Oh, you're not connected to the network. Ha! <laughs> Dire derp. Now you're cool. Cobble. Give me a minute. I'm gonna make packing tape real quick. I have a hunch that for some reason, so let's put our drawer controller Here. Let's put the drawers on top of it. There we go. And does this lock work now? Yeah, it does. Nice. That lock wasn't working on the controller, so I think the controller wasn't behaving. So now external storage on this dude. And a cable here. Should allow me to see my cobblestone again. Nice. And remember to make your priority something high so that the first place it sends things is here, right? Uh, now, because all these drawers are locked, the only things it can put in here are cobblestone and silicon. Cool. So any silicon that I happen to have, right? If I take silicon out, right, there's zero in there. And if I put silicon in, there should be three in there. You can totally see that. Beautiful. All right. So now that that's working, uh, what I could do is probably just have a sag mill right here um, with I made an octadec capacitor for it. And what I'm gonna do is configure him so that the side with the storage drawer is the output. Um, we're gonna get 
power into this dude somehow. Cool. And then we're going to want an exporter. We're also going to need some cables. And the exporter's job will be to export. Where are we going to export? Well, we're going to find out. Sand. Cool. Um, and if I specify oh, here, the external storage, no, exporter. There we go. Uh, we want you to export sand. And if I throw the crafting upgrade in there, you hear it? Nice. So it's crafting sand for us. And it's going to export that sand, any and all sand it has in the network, and make silicon. And the silicon is going to go into here. 10, 11. And once we have eight stacks of silicon, it'll stop, right? So this will take a few minutes to fill up, but after like 10, 15 minutes maybe of crafting sand into silicon, if I really wanted to be cool, um, do I have the stuff to make dark steel? Times five? No, I'm missing some obsidian. So let's get flint. Dark steel balls will totally improve the speed at which this thing, or the the chances of getting your, your silicon, but flint works as well. So throwing flint in there just gives you a little bit more silicon per sand. Cool. So you're doing one at a time, huh? Maybe I should teach you two to two is the recipe to make. Should probably upgrade this thing to be two cobble is two sand. And then we'll be good. Cool. Two cobble. No, not powered furnace. If I tell it to make, you know, two at a time, it'll speed it up. Because it's only, it's sending one item at a time, right? As we saw. So that's not what we want. So by telling it two makes two, this will never be a problem. This will never hurt that we're doing this. All it's going to do is mean that it'll make two at a time now, which will definitely speed up the processing, right? All right, so that's wrapping up point. Daryl 20 is off time. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll come back next time. See, that's all nice and neat and hidden. Pretty cool, right? Proud of that. So it's, it's another way to go about doing what we needed to do without, you know, wasting resources. All right, take it easy, guys.